We're here with head baseball coach Jason Burke. Sun shining, nice weather, five in a row. Series sweep against Claflin. You've scored 10 or more runs in the last five games. How are we feeling? <laughs> Feeling pretty good right now, Hunter. I just told the guys standing right there, you know, I think your last, you know, couple of games or your last 10 games for a lot of people use that stat, I think they mean something. And, um, you know, we've won five in a row now. Offense is obviously clicking, um, scoring a lot of runs. And I believe we're seven and three in our last 10, um, which, which to me is a huge stat. And I just told the guys to me, you know, that's something to build momentum off of. That's something to build confidence. And, um, you know, hopefully we can take that into Tuesday and into the weekend versus Augusta as well. Obviously, each three games, has seen someone more or less kind of take over. You had Connor Droz in the first game of the doubleheader. He had a really big game. You had a bunch of players. You, obviously the big hit from Lucas Martino to end things towards the end of the second game. Uh, and then this game you know, on Saturday seemed to have a, a lot of new faces kind of take over. Kyler Murphy had a, a couple big hits. Uh, Caleb McKittrick had a couple big hits. Uh, it just seemed, especially in the, the first inning, it seemed everyone was, you know, either scoring, getting on base, getting a couple extra base knocks, uh, you know, getting, I think it was 13 runs in the first inning. How important was that to really set the tone for the rest of the game? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, anytime that you can score in the first inning and, and kind of throw a punch, I think it's a good thing. And, um, you know, offensively in that first inning, you know, we just did a good job of swinging at what we should swing at and not swinging at what we shouldn't. Um, you know, I believe we had five walks um, in that inning, maybe six. Um, you know, and you take those free bases, um, if they're going to give it to you, and then the hits, you know, they become runs. Um, you know, so I felt like we did a really good job of that. And you're right. Um, you know, we had a lot, of, a lot of guys show up this weekend at different times. And, um, you know, that's the message we've been preaching is just pass the bat to the next guy. Guy. And sometimes it'll be a Connor, Dr Connor Droz or a Will McClellan in the middle of the order. And, you know, sometimes it'll be someone like a McKittrick um, or it'll be someone like a Caleb Singleton. You know, I told the guys after the game, Caleb Singleton was on base, I believe, five times today. Um, you know, and that, that kind of that kind of speed getting on the bases that much uh, can wreak havoc. It doesn't matter what the score is or who you're playing. You mentioned Will McClellan, the redshirt freshman. He, I think he had two doubles. He had a crap ton of RBIs today. Uh, what's been your thoughts on his play after obviously not playing last season? He was named PBC Freshman of the Week a couple of weeks back. He's been hitting the ball very well and also a, a very stable presence behind the dish. Yeah, I mean, Will's been phenomenal for us this year. I mean, we, we thought Will was going to be a good player last year. Um, he had some unfortunate things happen. He got mono pretty much right before our season. And, um, you know, obviously coming into this year, you know, he put on some muscle mass this summer and, and during the spring last year when he knew he wasn't going to play. And, um, you know, man, he's been he's been really good. And, you know, again, swinging at what you should swing at and taking what you should take, um, you know, Will, I believe, has almost an even walk to strikeout ratio. I think it's within one or, one or two walks compared to his strikeouts. So, I mean, not only is he hitting for power, uh, but he's also got a really high on base percentage and, and, again, does a very good job of the message that we preach to our guys, which is just pass the bat to the next guy. It seemed that at least in this series and the last couple games as well going outside of the series with Claflin, the starting pitching has been very strong. You got good performances out of Nick Foray, Luke Johnson today, Cooper King in the second game. You know, what's, what's your thought, Ben, on the starting rotation? I mean, obviously midweek games, you might start some guys that are kind of on the verge or you want to see what you got out of some guys. So those might be kind of hit or miss. But overall, it seems the, the starting rotation, at least on the, the weekend side, has really shored up over the last couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the decision to, to move Evan Demarius to the to the bullpen has, has paid off huge, um, and that affects the rotation. Like you're saying, we started, you know, Luke Johnson versus Emmanuel in North Georgia and now versus Claflin um, in the in the rotation as well. And the biggest thing is, you know, we're just throwing a lot of strikes. I mean, you know, 4A, Cooper, and, and, and Luke are all throwing a lot of strikes. And, you know, when you do that, people have to hit their way around the bases. And, uh, you know, that that's the message we've been sending to our entire pitching staff, not just our starters. And, again, you know, having Evan back there and having been at Nance back there as two pretty stable strike throwers in the later innings is, is huge for our pitching staff as well. Obviously, you move to another midweek game. This one, a bit different than most. You go up to Floor Field, home of the Greenville Drive, single-A affiliate of the Boston Red Sox. You're going to open North Greenville again, a team that gave you trouble a couple weeks ago earlier in the month. You know, you were able to get a good amount of runs on them, being the number one team. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts and what are some, uh, some interesting quirks about playing in a, a major league ballpark such as Floor Field? Yeah, I mean, it's an exciting exciting day for our guys. Uh, anytime you get to play, you know, in a minor league field or a major league field, it's a really cool thing. And uh, they, they got a great, great facility up there. I mean, it's a miniature Fenway Park. And, um, you know, it'll be quirky in left field and kind of quirky in right center where it kind of, you know, jolts out and gets really big. 
Um, so we'll to make sure that we're prepared and, and ready for that. And we'll work on that Monday. And obviously, once we get there for pregame, we'll do the same thing um, and work on that. Uh, you know, last time we played them, and they're, they're number one in the country for a reason. Uh, they're a very good team. They're a very deep team. Um, you know, you're right. We did score a decent bit of runs off of them, but we fell behind big early. Um, you know, we gave up a lot of runs in the first, a lot of runs in the second, um, and had to kind of chip our way back in there. Um, and again, it was the free 90s. It was the, you know, the walks and hit by pitches that really hurt us. Uh, you know, versus a team like that with really good bats, you have to make them hit their way around the bases, um, and they're going to get their hits. They're, they're going to hit some extra base hits because they're so talented. Uh, but if you don't give them anything, you know, with air or walks or hit by pitches before that, you know, it becomes one run innings instead of three or four. And that's how you have a chance to beat a team like that is really limiting their damage um, and taking advantage of it when they give it to us. Well, thank you so much for your time, Coach. Hopefully we see some exciting baseball on Tuesday.